Peace, hey YouTube, Eric Joseph Lewis here, and today I wanted to take a minute to make a quick video about a sweet little herbal ally that is just starting to pop up here in the Knoxville, Maryland area. And um, this is one that's especially relevant with the ongoing pandemic as it has a long history of being used as an antiviral. And um, in particular, it's been used worldwide for malaria treatment and uh, you know, it's got uh, a lot of medicine to share with the world. And um, of course, the herbal ally that I am talking about is uh, Artemisia annua or Sweet Annie. And this is one that is in the Asteraceae family. Um, and even now, this, even this dead stalk from last year this dead flower stalk from last year that you can see there's a, a whole area of them here where they're just folded over um from the snow oh and you can see a couple of our little kitties in the background uh one of them's annie down there and then that's mary right there um so yeah we got sweet annie playing in the sweet annie that's that's really nice <laughs> and convenient love the serendipity of that sort of thing um but yeah even these old dead flower stalks still have a tremendous amount of smell and that's kind of a testament to me to the potency of the uh, herb itself and some of the compounds that are in there um here you can see uh i'll just just went ahead and plucked this out you can see this is the new vegetative growth that's starting to come up here in uh, Knoxville, Maryland. And this is, uh, you can see, this is second year growth. This is attached to a root system that's already pretty well developed. So this isn't a seedling, which is interesting because the species name, Anua, is supposed to be indicative of its annual growth habit, but I suppose there are exceptions to that. And here's one of them right here. Um, so this is one that does have uh, a long history of folkloric use and traditional herbalism use, um, but there are uh, a few reports of uh, potential hepatotoxicity. So it's one that I like to only use in really acute situations um, when you have a confirmed uh, you know, viral infection or you're relatively certain that what you have is a virus. Um, it probably does have some antibacterial constituents as well, but I would lean more heavily on something like berberine or um, berberine containing plants in that sort of a situation. Um, because this one, there is a at least one reported case that's of uh, cholestatic hepatitis um, from somebody who was taking Artemisia annua with a number of other herbs as a preventative for malaria when they were traveling to Ethiopia. And so they were, they were taking it for like, I don't know, four or five weeks or something. And the toxicity slowly accumulated and um, they ended up going to the hospital with uh, symptoms that um, resembled jaundice and uh, you can look it up there's a, a really easy to find um, scholarly article if you just look up uh, Artemisia annua scholarly or look up Artemisia annua on Google Scholar it'll come right up and um, yeah this this plant though uh, you know all that being said it does have a long history of use and um, has been used quite successfully in treatment of malaria and is incorporated as a standard of care in some parts of the world. So it's definitely worth looking into and of course do your own research. I am not an herbalist. I'm just a goofball who loves plants. So yeah, uh, do your own research, triple confirm everything, listen to your heart, listen to your body, go slowly with all of these herbs. Take your sweet, sweet time. There's no rush in getting to learn all these things. It's, uh, it's a lifelong endeavor, and uh, I sure hope that um, Artemisia becomes a part of your path as it has mine. 
So, uh, and if you can't find Artemisia annua, if you can't find the sweet annie growing in your part of the world, there's also in the Southwest desert, we've got Artemisia tridentata, the desert sagebrush. Um, throughout the Northeast, I see uh, Artemisia vulgaris, commonly known as mugwort. Um, there's also Artemisia absinthia that sometimes people cultivate, and that's uh, wormwood, um, commonly named uh, wormwood. And yeah, there's a, a variety of different compounds in these herbs, including artemisianin and artaenuin. And, um, you know, some of these compounds can be really useful for us to have in our bodies in particular situations for short periods of time would be my uh, approach to it. When I interact with this plant, like back in late December, I got, I tested positive for COVID-19 and uh, I never had any real symptoms, so I don't know if it was a false positive or if I just have a strong immune system or if uh, it had something to do with all the herbs that I was taking because I was taking uh, artemisia, I was taking berberine, I was taking um, uh, andrographis and a number of other antivirals, hotunia, and um, I pulled out the elderberry syrup and um, yeah, so I had this whole protocol. I was doing daily herbal steams and uh, basically eating nothing but vegetable soup <laughs> for days um, and really resting a lot. So I'm sure that helped, but I never really exhibited any symptoms. So I'm not sure how it all went down. But that being said, uh, when I was taking the Artemisia, I only took it for about seven to 10 days maybe and only because I tested positive I wouldn't have taken it otherwise and so you know go slow with all these things take your sweet time be gentle listen to your body and um, I hope that uh, this video helps you on your path and helps you to develop a deeper relationship with Sweet Annie in particular and with plants in general. And if you did find this video useful, definitely give it a share, give it the thumbs up, the little like button um, down below and hit subscribe, hit the bell notification and you'll see more videos like this. So yeah, thanks so much for taking the time. Peace, family. Much love.